have a look at the question and it says, the base of a pyramid is the parallelogram ABCD. And you can see I've drawn that up because I knew it was gonna be important for all of my working here. They provide you the coordinates of the different vertices, uh, including uh, the apex of the pyramid, which is point P. Um, though I will point out, I mean, if you had a look through the question, right? If you read through part one, part two, part three, maybe you will realize that actually, you never ever need to refer to the apex, at least in the question as stated, because they don't ask you anything about volume, they never ask you to find out one of like the, the upward sort of facing um, triangles or anything like that. So I'm actually going to erase that, bit of a distractor there, um, because it is irrelevant to the actual questions that we are going to solve. Whoops, don't erase the um, bits that we need. So once we know um, A, B, C, and D, and we're actually gonna be playing around on this plane, uh, you realize even though this is a 3D question um, and we are gonna pull out some of our, our you know, 3D manipulation um, in our vectors, actually you can more or less regard this as a 2D um, question. So that's why I've drawn my parallelogram in two dimensions and I'm quite happy with it. So the first thing we need to do is find the values of A, B, and C. Where is, what are the coordinates of this point, capital C? Now there's a bunch of different ways to go about this, um, but the way I went about it was to recognize one of the properties of a parallelogram that we can take advantage of in terms of vectors. If you, is, if you have a look at any two opposite sides, right? So uh, you could have chosen um, either pair really. I, I went with B, C and A, D. If you have a look at these two sides, we know two things about those sides, which are namely that, like the it says on the tin, they're parallel, it's a parallelogram after all, uh, and also they are equal in magnitude. So being that they have the same direction, they have the same length, this tells us that these are actually going to be, they're gonna have the same displacement vector, right? So I can take advantage of that fact. If I can work out, say, this displacement vector AD, because I know the coordinates of each, um, and I can equate that with the displacement vector for BC, which has some unknowns in it, that will help me work it out. Okay, now how did I do this? Just to remind you, because I know it's maybe you're a bit rusty uh, for working out things like this. How do you work out the displacement vector between uh, two points? Well, think about it this way. Um, some of you may have the next line already in your head because you've got that memorized. But I always think, okay, to get from A to D, um, that's the same as going from A to somewhere else, like the origin, and then going via the origin to your final destination, which in this case is D. So AO plus OD, that concatenation or that stringing of vectors, one after another, by definition gives you AD. Um, vector AO, of course, is going from A to O is the same as um, going backwards from O to A. And the reason why that's useful is because that vector OA um, is right there, right? It's two, negative one, three. So it's just kind of stated by definition. All I need to do is turn that backwards. And I'm quite happy if you went straight to the line. I mean, some people will write it like this, O, D, take away O, A, because those are obviously equivalent. Um, but especially if you're like, I, I can't remember, do I switch these around? Um, much like trying to remember a formula, I always like to go back to something that is absolutely rock solid in my brain and then reasoning from there. Um, most mathematicians uh, memorize very few results because there's no space in their brain for that kind of thing. All right, now that you know what that is, it's just a matter of crunching the numbers to find out what AD is. So negative OA is gonna be negative two, one, negative three, and we're adding that to OD, which we can just read off from the question. And that gives you, if I'm getting this right, two, and then four, and then negative four. So far, so good. Um, we can employ a similar kind of logic to work out B, C, uh, and hopefully you're following along at this point, uh, or maybe you did a, you know, maybe you did A, B, A, B, and C, D, or D, C. That would also be fine. Um, just remember, by the way, if you're doing A, B, make sure you're doing D, C, and not C, D, because those are not the same vector, right? Um, what I got for B, C, just a bit of a spoiler, is that I got, uh, negative four plus A, and then I've got two plus B, and then negative one plus C. Now what you can say is, oh, these two vectors, this one here and this one here, they are the same displacement vector. So all I need to do is compare X's, compare Y's, compare Z's, and that's going to give me, in this instance, uh, what have I got here? So uh, A take away four, that's my X coordinate, uh, or my x value for this vector, rather. Um, that's gonna be equal to two, so that gives me a value of six for a. 
Um, doing the same for B, B plus two is gonna be four, so subtracting two from both sides give me that. And then C minus one is gonna be negative four, so when I add one to both sides, I get negative three. Okay, that's it. I found my values for A, B, and C. That was part one. Okay, part two. It says, find the cosine of the angle between the vectors AB and AD. So you can see we're talking about uh, this one here, AB, and there's AD over there. Um, how are you gonna do this? Can you go ahead and post in the chat what's the, um, what's the piece of knowledge from vectors that we, uh, it's, you know, frankly, even though we're in 3D at the moment, it's, uh, it's a 2D vectors idea. Uh, well done. <laughs> Varen has been enormously succinct very mathematician-like of you, well done. So I can use the dot product. Um, the dot product is gonna be equal to two different things, right? Number one, we can just multiply X, Y, and Z components between, oopsie daisy, A, B, and AD, that'll give us the dot product one way. And then we also have our other definition, which is the magnitude of one times the magnitude of the other, multiplied by exactly what we're trying to find, the cosine of the angle between them, right? So I'm just going to uh, write that here, part two. Uh, I'm taking advantage of this, right? Uh, magnitude one, magnitude of the other, cosine of the angle in between, and that's gonna be equal to, we would compare um, each of the different components to each other and multiply through, like so. You can see all I need to do to get cos theta, I don't even need to work out theta, just cos theta will do, is divide through by this. So if you go ahead and do that, I'll just do one line of working and then I'll get to the answer because most of you said you were okay with that. Uh, you're gonna get some Pythagoras on the left-hand side. So I think you got, um, this is gonna be uh, this length here, four plus one plus four. I think that's what you get from AB if you have a look at that. Um, when you do the subtraction and then when you get AD, I'm believing you're getting four plus 16 plus 16. It's almost like when you think about what they add up to, like this question was designed for that. Uh, and then when you're comparing uh, your X and your Y and your Z components, this is what I got. Um, here are my X's, here are my Y's, and then here are my Z's, like so, okay? So cos theta, is going to be after you, um, you know, you can have a look at that. That's gonna be nine, so it's square root of three. This is going to be um, 36, so it's square root is six. So everything ends up nice and in whole numbers, so I believe you get four over nine, okay? All right, so then I'm up to part three. I want to find the area of this parallelogram. Now, coming back to this shape, right? There's at least a couple of different ways to work out this area. Actually, there's a whole lot of different ways. Um, but in terms of working out like what's the, what area formulas do I know? Because they don't give us one, right? Um, you could say um, half base times height. It's actually the same formula. If you want to think about this as like a, a leaning over rectangle, if you had a rectangle, which had this base and, and this perpendicular height. Um, I'm just gonna put some constructions around here, right? There's the rectangle. You can see if you like slanted it over, this is now we're thinking back to like year seven, year eight geometry, right? Um, this section here, which is missing, is exactly equal to this section here, which is, um, which is added when you lean over, right? So um, we can work out a base and we can work out a perpendicular height if we want. Um, but that seems extraneous. That seems like it's not using part one or part two and, and the kinds of information that we developed there. So instead, I wanna think about how can I use the information that I already know? What's the the laziest possible way I can go about this. And I wonder if you're seeing, right? In terms of the information I've already got, I've got this angle in here, right? I also know to find out, um, you know, the earlier parts there, the cosine of that angle, I had to find out these two lengths, right? That was involved in the dot product. Um, I know that I believe um, AB is gonna be, that's gonna be three, I think. Uh, put it in like so, that's three. Um, and think AD is gonna be six, right? So I've got uh, a side, another side, and this angle that is between them, uh, we would call that an included angle between, if I created, whoopsie daisy, I wanted to create a straight line there. Hold on, there we go. That's gonna give me the included angle um, of the other two sides in a triangle here, right? Triangle A, B, D. So what I can do is, using just that information alone, that'll give me this, triangle here, let's see if that'll snap together, there we go. 
that will give me the area of that triangle if I just use half AB sine C. Um, and because of the properties of a parallelogram, you can even see, because my diagram is so awesome, uh, that you're gonna get a congruent triangle on the other side. So just double this area and off you go. So I'm gonna start putting some working down for that. The area of ABCD is going to be the same as double the area of that triangle that I just highlighted in green above, which is triangle ABD. So that is double of half AB sine C. Let's just have a look again here. What is AB sine C? Uh, here's my A, here's my B, and here's my sine C. So the way that I would actually write that is I would say it's that vector AB is the first uh, side. Uh, the other vector AD is what I had there. And then the included angle is going to be sine of, now just be careful, I had cos theta equals four over nine. You could reach for your calculator here. It'll handle a lot of the exact values for you. Um, but when you hit equals at the very end, you'll get some decimal stuff and you'll think, what is this? If it's not rational, your calculator will have a bit of trouble working out what that is, even though it might give you um, all the decimal places that you could want. We want, as you can see in part three, the area of the base of the pyramid without any approximation. They haven't said two decimal places or whatever, right? Uh, and we, can't, we can work this out exactly. So. I'm gonna put in here cos inverse of four over nine. I'm now gonna see uh, what I can do with the rest of this before working that out. These two are going to cancel, so that's nice. I already know what the two magnitudes are, so these two here are gonna give me, let's see, let's write that in orange, three times six, uh, and then it's just a matter of uh, what, is, what is this gonna be over on this side, right? What's this gonna be? Um, this is calling back to some um, knowledge you haven't used for a while in right angled triangles. If you create uh, a triangle here, which has an angle in it that gives you uh, cos inverse or a cosine of four over nine, that's adjacent on hypotenuse, right? And in this right angled triangle, you can work out what this unknown is just by Pythagoras. So you can see this is gonna be the square root of nine squared, which is 81, take away four squared, which is 16. So that's the square root of 65. I need that because I'm about to compute, you can see it over here, I'm about to compute sine, right? So that's gonna be opposite on hypotenuse. So I'm ready to pop that in. That's square root of 65 over nine. Uh, looks like I'm gonna get some canceling, right? So uh, there's a three in here and a three in here. So both of those will cancel with that nine. Uh, that six will leave a factor of two behind. So it seems to me like I'm getting two square root of 65. And this is an area after all. So let's slap some units on there, okay? So well done if you got there. Um, I'm not sure if you could find a more succinct and more efficient way um, to get it, um, or even if you had another solution. Even if it's not more elegant, sometimes it's still nice to have um, a different path through.